Hi, so in this video I'll be going over Chapter 6, Non-Experimental Research, and I'll be covering qualitative research, observational research, correlations, and complex correlations. Um, and first, I want to give you a general overview between non-experimental and experimental research. Um, in general, non-experimental research measures variables that occur naturally in the world, uh, whereas experimental research involves measuring variables that a res researcher splits into groups and creates an experiment by tinkering and metho uh, using methods to construct an experiment. Um, you could think of non-experimental as being uh, natural, like a tree or a forest, whereas experimental would be um, more like tools in which you're tinkering and constructing an experiment. Uh, Non-experimental research includes questions or hypotheses that relates to a single variable rather than many variables in experimental research. Non-experimental research um, includes non-causal relationships, whereas experimental research establishes a cause and effect between two or more variables. We'll go over this more um, when we discuss correlations. Non-experimental research can't ethically manipulate groups, whereas experimental research is able to construct groups on certain ethical principles um, that we'll learn later in the semester. Um, but for example, let's say we want to study how car crashes can affect people's memory. Uh, we can't ethically separate people to those um, who get in a car crash and those who don't get in a car crash. Um, we can't have people get in a car crash on purpose. That would be unethical, obviously. Um, but with non-experimental research, we can study um, those people who have been in a car crash and measure their memory um, based off of um, the accident in the car crash. And then non-experimental uh, research is qualitative, whereas experimental research is quantitative. And I'll explain this in the next slide. So qualitative research is more in-depth information about one person or a group of people. Um, and these conclusions um, to this research are often interpreted by the researcher. And they offer more exploratory explanations than specific um, explanations. Whereas quantitative research um, includes less de depth of, inform of information uh, with larger samples. And these conclusions are based on stats, and their expl explanations are uh, specific and concise, um, specific to that research question or hypothesis that they're trying to answer. Some strengths of qualitative research includes uh, that they generate new research ideas and questions, and uh, they provide detailed information about a person or a small group in different real world situations. And so we can gain a lot of information um, on this person or small group um, as they naturally occur. Where some strengths in quantitative research includes um, they're able to genera uh, generate uh, causal explanations. Um, you can establish a cause and effect between two variables. Um, this research is able to generalize to the entire population um, because we have large samples, we're able to generalize uh, our results that we obtain from this kind of research to the entire population. And then the reliability and validity of uh, the studies um, of quantitative research are generally strong. Some weaknesses of qualitative is that they lack uh, objectivity and they don't generalize to the entire population because there's such a small sample size. And then there are issues with uh, reliability and validity. And then some weaknesses of quantitative research includes that they could overlook details um, and specific information about uh, human behavior in the numbers. Um, so quantitative research really only deals with stats. Um, and so uh, researchers might lose information um, that is really important um, that qualitative research um, can answer. And then another, another weakness is that uh, answers, um, they answer general questions about human behavior, um, whereas qualitative research uh, answers more specific questions about uh, natural human behavior.
And qualitative research includes subcomponents of how to perform research, uh, which includes observational research that is naturalistic with participants um, or structured uh, participants. And it can include case studies on one person or a group of people, and it can include archival research. Naturalistic observation involves observing natural behavior in an environment uh, that the behavior typically occurs. This could include uh, disguised natural observation, um, such as a researcher playing children uh, or studying children uh, behind a one-way mirror. Or undisguised natural observations, uh, such as Jane Goodall, as you see here. Uh, she was a famous primatologist who studied chimpanzee behavior in the wild. Uh, and this method is really useful to observe people and animals in their naturally occurring behavior. Um, however, when people or animals know that they're being watched, they may change their behavior, um, their natural behavior, in order to act differently than they normally would. Uh, so this is one weakness um, that naturalistic observation uh, can have. Next is participant observation, which involves researchers becoming active participants in the group or situation they're studying. Um, there's disguised participant observation, in which researchers pretend to be members of a group they're studying. Um, this is kind of, like, kind of like being a spy on a secret mission blending in with people uh, they are studying and spying on their behavior. Um, this is a ethical concern um, regarding deception, um, as people may not want to be studied in, se in secret. Um, but as long as the researcher debriefs the people after the observation, uh, then they're able to obtain data from those people, um, which can give a lot of information on whatever the researcher is trying to study. There's also undisguised participant observation where researchers make it known who they are among the group. Um, and uh, they let them know that they're going to study that group. Um, another issue like this arises when a researcher uh, can deceive participants by withholding what exactly they're studying. Um, and people could change their natural behavior um, when they know that a researcher is studying them. Another observational method are structured observations. This includes observing behavior in an unnatural setting, um, therefore more structured than observing in a naturalistic environment. Structured observations help researchers gain more uh, quantitative information. By quantifying and coding for behaviors in a structured setting, and here uh, the researcher only focuses on very specific and pre-planned behaviors. Uh, this can, can include bringing people into a lab and interviewing them while observing their facial or body behaviors, or it may include bringing people into a lab setting and observing people through a camera setup in the room, and then the researcher would watch the video and code for specific behaviors. Um, in my research uh, in grad school, I had people um, like this who watched videos, um, and in the videos I placed either a snake, rabbit, or bottle, um, on the hike video that they watched, and I recorded their physiological reactions, as you see here. Um, but if I wanted to code maybe their facial, their facial or their body reactions when seeing those objects in the hike, um, then I would use a structured observation to specifically code for facial and body language um, that I'm looking for. The strengths of this method is that researchers can focus on uh, many specific behaviors, uh, which can reduce the time and energy it takes um, as opposed to naturally observing someone. Um, but as researchers exert more control in these structured observations, um, it, it can make the person's behavior uh, less uh, natural. Next is a case study, and a case study is a detailed um, examination of one person or a small group of people. Um, case studies often include uh, 
the study of people with a rare condition, uh, behavior, or illness, and a researcher details a description of the person or group's behavior from their point of view. Uh, case studies are often done through interviews, observations, and open-ended questions um, that allow the person to describe their case in their point of view. Uh, the strengths to case studies are that they provide detailed information about that one uh, specific person or group, um, and they allow researchers to investigate unethical situations. Um, for example, a girl named Jeannie, as you see here, was unfortunately raised by an abusive family uh, by locking her in a small room. Uh, she had practically no social interaction with other people, which led to her inability to speak and form language later in her life. Um, case, research case researchers were often interested in Jeannie not only to help her, but to understand how language is learned. Um, and you could see uh, Jeannie was one individual case in which researchers were, were interested in not only uh, why her parents did this um, and to get her help, but um, this also allowed them to analyze the consequences that occur uh, when people don't learn language at a certain age. Uh, but some weaknesses of case studies are that it lacks generalizability, uh, which refers to the ability to um, apply a research, a research finding to the entire population. Um, so just one instance in one person may not generalize to the entire population. And then uh, there could be researcher bias if a researcher misinterprets information that they receive um, and makes an interpretation um, that is biased. And another approach is archival research, which involves analyzing data of other sources such as books, um, online sources, articles or records, or other media sources. During our content analysis for our first paper, uh, we'll be using archival research, um, or partially archival research. The strengths of uh, archival research includes that it takes less time and less uh, money uh, for re researchers to conduct a study. Um, they can easily access uh, this information um, either from a book, online source, or a media source. Uh, but some weaknesses are that researchers have no control over what information um, they're receiving. Um, a lot of um, information or archival research that they gain may not be done by a scientist or another researcher. Uh, so it may be difficult for a researcher to sparse out certain information that relates to their research question or hypothesis they're trying to study. And then that's it for this video. Um, please watch the next video for correlational research and how to conduct correlational research on SPSS. I'll see you in the next video.